Hi everyone. Before I start today's lesson, I just want to go over a few things. Um, here we have a circle um, and I wanted to just go over the uh, different uh, vocab um, right here and I want you to take a look at uh, major arc. So major arc is um, here we, we have it labeled D H B. So you can you look here right here. This is the major arc right here. And the symbol for arc is like it looks like an arc of a circle. And then another major arc A, B, and F. So right here, A, B, and F. So major arc. And then semicircle is A, F, D. So semicircle is half of a circle around. Or you have D, B, A. Okay? So those are semicircle. Um, central angle is A, C, and D. So this right here is called central angle. So the C is in the middle here. So that uh, indicates central angle is A, C, D. Central means in the middle. And then um, for major arc and semicircle, we use same symbol because it's just around the circle. Those are only around the circle. Angle, we use the angle symbol. Circle, we do a circle with a dot in the middle because circle has a center. And this one is circle C. So this is, we use the center point, center, uh, to name the circle. So the center point is C. So circle C, that's how we name. Minor arc is D and F right here, A and H, and H and F. So what is the difference between minor arc and major arc? Minor arcs measure less than a semicircle are presented by two endpoints. So minor arc, this one, is less than a semicircle because semicircle is always half of a circle. So only use two endpoints like DF, AH, HF for AB, right? But it's um, here, those are the um, minor arc, only use two endpoints and it's less than a semicircle. Major arc measure, they, are, they measure more than a semicircle and they always represent by three points. The first and third point represents the end points while the middle point is at any point on the arc located between the end points. So here, major arc is D, H, B, right? So it's just like you have one end point to the next and H is uh, in the middle of between that. But it has to be bigger than semicircle. Major arc is bigger than semicircle. And then A, B, and F. So they go like that. So A and F is the endpoint. B is any, it doesn't have to be in the middle of them. So major arc has three points connected and has to be bigger than semicircle, which is half of a circle. Minor arc is less than semicircle and it has two endpoints. Here, radius is CD or AC. And the voice starts from the center. Diameter is AD, so we use the line segment of points. Chord is HB. And chord is, you see this HD? Chord is a, a straight line segment whose end points, A, so this is the end points. You have H and B, those are endpoints. They both lie on a circle. So this is a chord. So radius, diameter, they are not chord. Chord is just not radius, not diameter. It's just a line segment that has endpoints that lie 
on the circle. So the points, this has to be on the circle. Now, secant, if you look at secant, from the core, if it goes forever, so it goes out of the circle and goes out, we call that secant. So G and K here, we call that secant. Tangent is E, uh, G and E right here. Tangent is a, a line on, uh, on a circle, but it only uh, has touches the circle at only one, exactly only one point. So tangent is G and E right here, and it's a line, and it's uh, touching the circle. It's outside, right? But it has to only touch at only one at one point. So this is a tangent. This HB is a chord. And then when they extend through the chord is secant. So secant is uh, G and K. So we have to know this term. So major arc means greater than semicircle has three points. Okay. Semicircle is half of a circle. Use both of these signs. Central angle is the middle. We use the central point, the center of a circle, that letter for to name a circle. Minor arc has two points. So major arc has three points. Minor arc only has two end points. And smaller than semicircle, so that's why it's minor. We know radius, half of diameter has to go from the circle, I mean center. Diameter is from here to here. And then a, a chord is not diameter, not radius. It's just a line that is connected, but the endpoints is on the circle. And then uh, diameter is considered a chord uh, also, so, but not radius because radius is from the center to here. Diameter is considered a core because from here to here, you know, that's an end point, right? So uh, let me correct, diameter is a core because the end points lie on the circle. These, so you have this and this, right? Um, secant is from the core when it extends, extends furthermore. And then tangent is outside of circle, but has to touch the circle outside. It has to be a line. So core, secant, and tangent, they're all lines. And then um, chord is a line segment. Secant and tangent are line. That means it's keep going forever. That's why you have arrows on them. And then uh, secant has two endpoints that touches the circle. A tangent only has a one point that touches the circle. Okay? So those are the difference of um, all the definition, all the um, properties in a circle, okay? So we're going to look at chords, arcs, and inscribed, uh, inscribed angles today. So here on an arc, measuring arc, an arc, uh, arc's measure is equal to the measure of the corresponding central angle. So when we, when we say measure the arc, we're looking at we're talking about the uh, angle that is corresponding to the central angle. So here the arc of uh, AB is actually 75 degrees. If they're asking for arc length, that's something you're going to find the distance from here to here. That's a different thing. But if they're asking just the measure of an arc, they're talking about the angles inside uh, right here. So the measure of this arc will be 75 degrees. So here, arc A, B, C, okay, is equal to arc A, B plus B, C. So that's just the uh, arc addition postulate. The measure of an arc formed by two adjacent arcs is the sum of the measures of the two arcs. Congruent arcs. Within a circle or in congruent circles, congruent central angles have congruent arcs. 
converse is also, also true. So when you uh, have um, something like this, let's take a look. Are these arcs uh, congruent? Their measures are equal because, uh, but there are 65 degrees over here. But their actual length will not be equal and thus the arcs, arcs will not be congruent because they are not from the same congruent circles. So basically what we're saying is this arc xy, zw, their, uh, their uh, measures are equal 65, but their actual length are not equal. The length is the, this because uh, the measures are equal. They're both 65, but arc length is not equal because the first arc is from this smaller circle, part of this smaller circle. So this is an arc of this circle. And the bigger arc, ZW, is a part of arc of a bigger circle. So yeah, the measure 65, 65 is congruent, but the arc length is not congruent. So the measure, we're talking about the degrees inside, but the arc length are the two different things. Okay, so arc measures are degrees, arc lengths are one end point to the other. So find the measures of the arc. So when I say measures of the arc, we're talking about degrees. So here you have, we're going to use M measure. This means arc, this curve, DC. That means find the degrees inside, which is 45. Arc measure of an arc AB is also 45. They're vertical angles. Then what is the measure of arc AD? We don't know. That's not enough information. And then what is the arc measure arc of CD? We don't know. There's not enough information. Find the measure of each arc in a circle A. So the circle is, you, we always use just one center point when we name the circle. Arc CD, if they ask you to find the measure, we're talking about the angles inside. So this right here is 148. Now what is the measure of an arc CDB? So C, D, B. So you're going to do 40. 148 plus this is a straight line. Let's say this is a straight line. Straight line always has 180. So 180 plus 148, 328. Now, complete circle is 360. So it cannot be more than 360. What is a measure of an arc? B, C, and D. 32 plus 48 right here. B, C, and D. This whole thing right here. So that's 180. So measure of an arc means angles inside. Find the measure of, of on each arc. Now we have some um, expressions here. So what we're going to do is add up everything using algebra. Make, make that expression equal to 360. And then solve for x and substitute each x and find the arc measure and write them outside right here. So that's what I did. So here you have 2x minus 14 plus 2x plus 3x plus 10 plus 3x plus 4x. So if I combine like terms, 2x plus 2x is 4x plus 3x is 7x. 7x plus 3x is 10x. 10x plus 4x is 14x. If I add the co constant numbers, negative 14 plus 10 is negative 4. And they add up to be 360. So these are all angles, okay? If I add 4 on each side divided by 14, x equals 26. Once I get the x, I'm going to plug it into each one. And then solve, use calculator, solve the uh, measure of each arc. So arc right here, 2 times 26 minus 14 is 38. So arc BC is 38. 2 times 26, 
52. So arc CD is 52. So we're talking about the angles, okay? 3 times 26 plus 10, that's 88 for arc AD. 3 times 26, which is 78, arc EA. 4 times 26 is 104, arc ED, EB. So all together, when you add them up, you need to get 360 inside. So measure means degrees inside. Next thing we're going to look at is called inscribed angles. Inscribe, uh, inscribed angle means an angle whose uh, vertex lies on a circle and whose sides are cores of the circle or one side tangent to the circle. So it, example is you have a um, uh, uh, line through a center, this is a diameter, and then you have a chord, okay? So A, B, C, right here you see the A, B, C, is uh, angle A, B, C is an inscribed angle. So inscribed angle means you have an angle inside the circle, but take a look. The vertex has to lie on the circle. So this is an angle, right? This is an angle. This is an angle. This is an angle inside of a circle. So which one is called inscribed circle? This one is a no. Because the vertex, this is a vertex. This is a vertex. This is a vertex. This is a vertex. Where the angle is, right? It needs to be on the circle so the size has to be coarse so it needs to touch the circle this vertex part right here it, it starts here it's not on the circle it's not touching so this is not if this is an angle inside of a circle but it's not inscribed so this is not inscribed circle it's just a regular angle in a circle but this one is inscribed because this vertex where the angle is is touching and it, the vertex lies on a circle, okay? This one, no, it's just touching the center, but this one is okay. This one is on the circle, touching the circle. And the, the size of this angle, because angle always has two sides, are chords. It has one point, two end points, line segment inside the circle. This is a chord, right? This is a chord, this is a chord. These are not, this one's not chord. It needs to go all the way one. It has cores, the end point of a chord has to touch the circle. Okay? So that's why uh, this, these are not cores either. So like one end point has to be on the circle. So these are, these, uh, the first one and the third one, the red ones, no, no, those are just a, an angle inside of a regular angle inside of a circle. But this one, the second one and the fourth one, these are called inscribed circles. Inscribed circle, I mean angles. I keep saying circles, sorry. It's inscribed angle, okay? Intercepted arc. Intercepted arc means an angle intercepts an arc if and only if each of the following condition holds. The end points of, a, of the arc lie on the angle. All points on the, uh, of the arc except the end points are in the interior of the angle. Each side of the angle contains an end point of the arc. So this arc a, D, C is the intercepted arc of A, B, C. So let me explain this. So here, uh, you see this right here, A, D, C. It is, it is, is the intercepted arc of angle A, B, C. They are together like this. So here, you see this angle A, B, C. 
This is an inscribed angle. And then the endpoints of this angle, this is the angle, endpoints of, an, uh, end of the arc right here lie on the angle. So this is right here, the endpoints of the arc and the endpoints of the angles, they are meeting right here. And all points of the arc here, A, D, and A, C, D, and A, uh, except the endpoints are the interior of the angle. And then each side of the angle contains a uh, endpoint of the arc right here. Okay? So it's like they're like kind of like together. It's a part of the this arc. So this the one that's outside of it is not intercept the arc, only here, where you go you look at the endpoints of the arc and then they it touches the angle endpoints of the angles here. Okay, so that's uh, this is called this only this side is part of this uh, angle that's called intercepted arc. Inscribe angle theorem the measure of an inscribed angle is equal to half the measure of the intercepted arc and thus the central angle. Important, an angle formed by a chord and a tangent, so this is a chord and this is a tangent. Tangent only touches the, uh, the, the line, only touches the circle outside. Tangent is outside and only one point. Chord is a line segment inside with two endpoints, right? So an angle formed by a chord and a tangent can be considered an inscribed angle. So what I'm saying is you see this arc AB. Okay, uh, is uh, divided by two is equal to angle A, B, and C right here. So the measure of an inscribed angle is equal to half the measure of the intercepted arc. So this is the intercepted arc. So right here, if I have an inscribed angle 55 degrees, I have the intercepted arc. So it's like, a, looks like a, like, you know, like, what do you call it? Like a fan, looks like a little fan or something, right? So here, intercepted arc, this is intercepted arc of this uh, angle. So what you do is you do 110 divided by 2, then you get the inscribed angle. So this is called inscribed angle theorem. Inscribed angle is always intercepted arc divided by 2. So that's the relationship. So this divided by 2 is this one. 110 divided by 55. So the 110 divided by 2 is 55. So that's the formula. Measure of angle ABC equals measure of angle arc AB, uh, AB divided by 2. So it's always intercepted arc divided by 2 equals the inscribed angle. That's the formula. That's the theorem. If two inscribed angles of a circle intercept the uh, same arc, then the angles are congruent. So here is angle C and D. They share, look here, same intercepted arc. They both open to arc AB, right? Their arc AB is overlapped, overlapping. And if this arc AB is measured 60, then the intercepted arc will be 60 divided by 2, according to the theorem, 60 divided by 2. They're always going to be congruent if they share same intercepted arc. Find the value of x and y. So as you can see, there's an in, in, inter, uh, inscribed angle. Inscribed, there are three inscribed angles, y, 50, and x. And look at this arc. They're all sharing. They're all open to this arc. And this arc is, if this is 50, then this arc will be 50 times 2, which is 100. Because inscribed uh, angle is half of an arc, intercepted arc. And all, all these three inscribed angles share the same intercepted arc. 
So this is going to be 50, that's going to be 50. So X and Y, therefore, both 50 degrees. Let's take a look at this one. This is 50. We're solving for X. This one is 40 right here. So X is the inscribed angle, and intercepted arc is 40 for this X inscribed angle. So 40 divided by 2 will be 20. So this will be 20. And then 50 times 2 will be 100. So this intercepted arc will be 100. But from here to here, A and D is 40. Then 100 minus 40 is 60. So from D to C is 60. So together is 100 from here to here. So they only give you one part of the inter, uh, intercepted arc. So that's why the Y is from here to here, D, C. So the Y is 60. So basically, it's half of intercepted arc, the inscribed angle. An angle inscribed in a semicircle is a right angle. So if you have a semicircle, which is right here, and then if, if this is part of this and make an inscribed angle with a semicircle, it's always going to be 90 degrees. Because half of 360 is 180, the semicircle is half of a circle, exactly half. Then 180 divided by 2 is 90. So the inscribed is going to be always right angle. For inscribed quadrilateral, the opposite angles of a quadrilateral inscribed in a circle are supplementary. So basically, here is 180, and the other side is 180, like this blue part and this red part. That's basically what it is. I know there was a lot of information, so we'll, we'll um, review more in class. Thank you for watching.